Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I wanted to do a quick little takeaway video on Git and Xcode and my workflow with GitHub. So right here, I've got Xcode open. And some of the things that I think you'll find helpful are when you've got a big project, it's really hard to find your changes. Xcode 15 is pretty good on this, but it's got some regression. So the animation on like a really large project gets a little bit cumbersome. So when I was working for GoPro, um, this little change history is helpful, but it does a lot of unselection. I reported a bug. I'm hoping that Xcode uh, and Apple can fix that. The Xcode team can fix that. Um, so I have one change in this help screen. Uh, I might just delete this help screen and rewrite it. I'm not sure. I might just, just totally avoid worrying about it right now. This is part of the onboarding flow for this app. I don't know if I need it. Um, there's a lot more features that I cut that don't exist anymore. So I made one change and this, this button down here, show only files with source control status, allows me to quickly see what's changed, what's not changed. If you select one of these and then you turn this off, it will select that in your main list so that you can find it. So that's super helpful. If you're in one of these files, um, what I do is I do control and then backslash. And that allows me to jump between any of the changes in the file. And if there's multiple files with changes, so if I just do something here, this will take me here. Um, actually, I don't need to do that. Uh, we can just jump back. Um, this will just be for a single file. So control backslash, super useful to jump around to find what you need to change. Now, the other regression is if you have multiple files, you used to be able to do source control and I need to report this bug again. I don't think I have. If you stage changes, it's only gonna do one of the files and I don't know if it's the first one you click or the one that you clicked on seconds that you've got the menu over. So now if you wanna commit those, you have to do each one individually until Apple fixes this bug. So you have to select off of one, right click and say source control stage changes to commit. Now under editor, let's see, no, sorry, it's under integrate is the new menu for source control status. Commit is going to be this kind of gnarly shortcut, which is option command and then C. So if you do that, it's the new UI. I don't like this one as much as before. Um, I don't know if I can get a multi, it's all in line. I don't, I can't get the side by side, which I kind of like sometimes comparing. And I'm a little colorblind. So like this reddish hue versus the bluish hue is sometimes hard for me to differentiate when they're not side by side. I just sort of see a highlight and it color doesn't always click for me. So like color is not the best way to indicate um, something has not changed. So you can always click on this sidebar and unstage a change if you wanna be surgical and only commit part of it. Um, or if you wanna commit everything, you can go ahead and do that. Now here, you can, if this stuff is staged here, you'll see that it is staged also in your file system. So if I do a git status, I have a shortcut here. So git status will show me what is, has changed here. GS is gonna give me a short version of that. Um, and then git um, diff will show me what has changed here. Since this is staged, you're not gonna see anything on the command line. So you'd have to do git diff dash dash cached. And then this will show you those changes. So sometimes I do this just because I need an alternate view. The, the UI is not as obvious in Xcode. I can tell the difference between this red and this green a lot better because there's more value change. Um, some people might find this still hard to see the difference, but at least you have a minus and a plus. So it's, it's more obvious. It takes getting used to read, reading this format. So I'm usually doing that if I need to check something. If I know exactly what I want, it's a lot easier. And so I can just commit. So this was um, fixing a compiler warning for open URL. And then the other thing I did was just remove dead code, right? No, I just took this out, but I don't even know if I need this. So let's assume I don't, and let's go ahead and just delete it. So I just selected everything deleted. Now you're gonna see that it is different. Um, it's not staged right now. So I have to stage that, and now it's gonna present a little bit differently. So since there was a partial stage, um, if I go back, we're not gonna see it anymore. Um, 
now it's just becoming a white space and I can probably get rid of another line here, save that. So it's just deleting a bunch of stuff that I don't need. Okay, anytime you make changes in this editor, um, you will need to stage all those changes. So if I wanna just clean up more white space, I can do that. If I really don't need this anymore, um, since there's nothing of value, I can just delete it. Again, I'd have to click stage change and now it's just gonna get rid of that method entirely. And I'm not even using the help screen view controller much. Um, so I might cut this, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so I can get rid of that. And then we can say, removed another compiler warning for status bar color. I don't even know if that's gonna work properly. I don't really care because I'm probably taking this feature out and gonna redo it in a Swift UI view or just not do it at all. It's not super important. So then I'm gonna hit commit. Now there are options, you can commit and push, you can unstage all. And then in the middle, there's some tabs. You can see unstaged and staged and all changes. Sometimes this UI gets a little bit wonky. But that's the basics. Uh, and if we go through and hit commit, you're gonna see that that has committed. If we do a, a git status, you'll see that there's no local changes, a git diff, there's no local changes, a git diff, dash dash cached, no local changes. So it's all in a commit. If I do a git status, <coughs> we're gonna see that I'm ahead by 13 commits. That's the same thing that's displaying right here when I do my GS command. So GS is that. I think if I open up my CSHRC, SHRC file, you'll be able to see what some of these are. So I just put them over here. You can pause the video and, and copy any of these that you want. Um, this is my git status. So it's a git status dash SB. If I can type status, and it'll do that. So that's an alias down here. Um, I have apparently pull and push. Um, and then I've got some other statuses and aliases up here. So that's kind of cool. All right, so I'm not gonna go more detail into that, but now I've got all these local commits. I'm gonna push them to GitHub, so git push and that's gonna put them on the app store. There's no warnings here. I can see that it wrote all those changes um, to disk and then uploaded it. And now if I do a GS, you're gonna see that there's no changes. If I do git status, you're gonna see that we're up to date. If I do a git log, I typically do this when I'm trying to just verify my changes when I'm working in a team of just making sure, okay, are these commits the ones that I expect? Uh, and I think GL might be a command. No, that's not a command that I have. That was something I set up at work, but it's not on this machine. So I'm gonna have to go in and update some of my, some of my aliases um, just to add some more useful ones that I've been using. Uh, and then I can do that in a separate video. So if you wanna see that, comment down below and I can share those exact settings if you, if you wanna be able to copy those out. Um, so that is Xcode. Now, in this view, we're not gonna see any changes. I think this only shows you local changes is what I was deducing. So if you push changes like we just did, you won't see any of those changes here anymore. And then you have to go into the repositories view. I've got this special branch just for the app store. And these are all my commits here. So, uh, but these are, sorry, it starts, this branch actually doesn't, does it indicate when it starts? Yes. So this is my master branch that is on the origin, which is GitHub. And then these are all of the commits that I've made. So you can see I've got tons of commits. I'm cleaning a lot of dead code, fixing a lot of different things. It's just, it's been a lot. Like let alone today is 12 plus commits that I've done. And I still have more work to do. Um, I'm going to get on the app store. I think what we're going to do next video, I'm going to show you uh, how to upload to the app store 
And then after that, I'm going to dive back into code probably. I might do a tutorial. Um, so let me know in the comments down below what you want to see on, on the coding front. So back to this on GitHub, if we refresh here, I've got a pull request that's got all of these different changes and you can sort of see my work history as I've been working on it. So I have uh, 16 commits that I pushed. Uh, I think that's these commits from last month. I'm not exactly sure on the timeline, but you can see there's been a lot of progress here and I can click on any one of these and sort of drill into what, what those changes were. So this was fixing the order. I discovered that the menu on the menu displays it in reverse order in um, this UI menu. So I wasn't expecting that. So I had to flip flop the photo with the files. So I switched those up. We can go to the next commit, sort of see what I did. This is me getting rid of Mac support. I just don't want to deal with that for this old app. This is me doing the order. So you can see I've got really focused commits. And as I do these commits, I try to write helpful messages so I know exactly what they're doing. This is trying to fix a bug. I don't think it really fixed the bug. It's something I could probably throw away and, and not use, but I just it's not worth the time to go back to. And here I'm removing a lot of dead code and fixing a different bug. So there's a warning here. Um, so that's how I use Git. I try to keep things as focused as possible. Sometimes I clean things up. I am surgical about what I'm committing so that the commit history makes a lot more sense. I don't like squashing everything into one commit. If I'm working on a PR, I like to have some kind of story. Now, I'm not super anal about it. I'm not going to do like tiny little things um, because that becomes a lot of, unless someone has a better workflow, that becomes a lot of work to be like, I have to be super surgical and Xcode is not the easiest to select the things that I want with Xcode 15. It was a lot easier in Xcode 14, but being able to select multiple files is problematic in Xcode. So uh, you can see I've done a lot of changes. That's a lot, a lot of changes. I deleted a ton of files. So you can see I've added 2,196 lines of code over the past month and I've taken away 20,000 lines of code. All right, so that is playing around on GitHub. Um, I'm a big fan of showing what you do. So typically I will put a movie if I'm on a team and screenshots, and then I will summarize the fixes. So here we're fixing like 150 warnings. We've switched um, to the, we switched UI popovers, uh, controllers to use the new UI view controller presentation, um, fixed popover sizing so we can potentially self size if I ever fix that. Uh, various bug fixes with opening an album and then cleaning up dead code, uh, removed AL asset picker logic since photo kit deprecated it. All right, so that's typically what I do. If there's a JIRA ticket, um, I put a JIRA ticket. If there's related repositories, I'd link them. Um, and I just, I try to tell the story of what I've done here. Now this is like massive cleanup. So there's so many things that I'm doing here. Um, just trying to get this, um, updating from like Xcode. I don't, I don't even know. This would be iOS 6 to iOS 17 and fixing lots of small details. So like that's my summary. 
I might put that at the top and then add these other things. And as I go, if I'm, if I'm making changes, I'm going to update this. I just like just having like a Jira ticket. Like uh, tell me what you did. Tell me if you've added tests. Um, we also added our first, that's kind of cool. We added our first Swift file. I guess it's my first Swift file to the old Objective C app. And I might replace that with Swift UI. <laughs> so that, that might get updated, but just moving forward. All right, so in the next video, I'm going to try and upload this to the App Store, and then we'll have a follow-up if it gets approved, rejected, and I'll tell you what worked, what didn't work. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.